What is up guys, welcome back. So in this episode I'm planning to talk about some gems, um, basically where to farm them, how to gem your monsters up, and what to watch out for early on. I kind of wish someone told me about this before, before I started raising a lot of my monsters. Um, the most important thing I wanted to talk about in this video is actually the about your monsters natural gem slots. Uh, uh, I'm gonna actually need like a copy of the same monster. Alright, so right here I have two of the same monsters. I have the fire succubus, um, a normal one and a variant one, but they're basically the same monster. Um, as you can see the, the gem slots of the two monsters are actually completely different. I actually have a few like, if you look at this water suck water one um, that I have here, it has a diamond, a triangle, and a square. Um, but not all of them have the same same gem slots. So this one has like a square, square, triangle. Uh, this one has diamond, triangle, square. So this this one's all the same as the other one. Uh, basically, what I mean to say is the gem slots are completely random, and there's actually a, a unique stat for each different type of gem slot. Um, I believe the diamond one is the one with crit damage or crit rate. Uh, I, th I believe it's crit damage. Just need to find one really, really fast. Or was it resistance? I can't. I can't remember exactly. Okay, it was resistance. Um, the diamond one has resistance. The square one has crit rate, and the triangle one has crit damage. So only diamond slots can have resist. Um, only square slots can have crit rate and only triangle slots can have crit damage. Um, you you kind of really want to watch out for this before you start raising a certain monster. So, like, even even the very, very common monsters like um, like, like Miho's, they have different gem slots. And, or, or the mermaids, they actually have, like, completely different gem slots. I wish someone told me this before I started raising a lot of my monsters. As a general rule of thumb, it's usually fine to raise, raise like, a monster that that has um, whatever gem slots if it has like the main type of gem slot you need so like for example uh, the water siren is a is a um, you know a healer basically you want to build her somewhat tanky she's not going to be doing too much damage but you want to make sure she survives so she can keep your team healthy so in in this case the only defensive slot or the defensive unique stat is resistance so it might be important that she has a diamond slot in, in which case my my water siren does so this is perfectly fine although she doesn't have a different slot of every single gem type but i think as a general rule of thumb you want to have one with um, all unique gem slots you want to have one with just basically every single type of gem slot um, possible. This way it's a lot more flexible, you can build your monsters in any way you want. Um, for mo most of the time attackers you want to have like at least one square slot, this way you're able to build like, you know, put a crit rate rune on that slot. Um, it might be nice to have a crit damage slot as well, so I'm really really lucky that my Fire Arthur actually has these two slots. So. This is just something you really want to watch out for before you start raising a certain monster. Um, you might want to go and look at your monsters right now and make sure they have the right slots. And if you have a, uh, a like, if you're completely missing a slot, say for example you're raising a healer, but you're completely missing a diamond slot, um, and you didn't raise that 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 monster that high yet, it might be worth it to raise a different one right now because as of now there's no way to change the different type of gem slots. So. This is really, really important um, before you even start raising a monster. You want to watch out for this. Like, I, I, I really, really wish someone told me about this earlier. Um, but all in all, I didn't make too many mistakes. I think, I think it's mostly fine. Um, a lot of my monsters, probably with the exception of this, this, um, this fire succubus right here. She doesn't have a crit rate slot, which she kind of lacks. So I might instead raise this one and completely scrap this one and maybe feed her over. Um, because of how important the crit, crit rate slot is to most, like the majority of attackers right now. Um, another thing I want to talk about is about farming for runes. So this is just kind of, this is, just now that was information, this is a bit more like, um, a bit more about my insight, a little bit more opinion based. So, um, for runes, there are flat runes and there are percent based, percentage based runes. So that like every rune you get, you can there's like an HP percent or an HP flat, attack percent, attack flat, defense percent, defense flat. I think the general rule is if your monster has like I only know the general rule for HP, but if your monster has over um, 
11k HP, it's worth it to use the def the, the percent base runes um, instead of the 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 flat runes. So by the time you raise most of your monsters to five stars, their their stats are going to be a lot higher than um, the minimum, like that, basically higher than the, the the threshold where the percent is better than the the flat stats. Um, but for very very early on, if you're only using like three star runes, I would still recommend you use flat runes, especially when your monsters are only at four stars. It might be a lot better. And then once you're able to get into extreme mode, um, you're able to get you're able to farm four star runes through the through the maps, and you, you're able to get like you know percent base base four star runes. And by that time, you should be raising your monsters to five stars, so you can switch your monsters to five stars by then. Um, the the first four maps here, they only give the the rune set bonus that they give is all flat stats. I think this is very very basic information. Um, you know, the, the, basically the set bonus, if you have three types of the same gems, you get a bonus. The first four maps all give flat stats, like flat flat um, HP, like this one gives flat HP, flat defense, flat everything. In my opinion, the flat stats are actually really, really bad, especially late game. Once your monsters become six stars, they're going to be, um, you know, the, like 150 recovery is going to be barely anything compared to um, percent recovery, which... You could get, I think, I'm not sure if you can get percent recovery. You can get, oh wait, I think this one has percent recovery. No, this one has attack. So you, can, you can't get percent recovery, you can only get um, eight, attack percent, um, HP percent, and like defense percent, and then resist percent. So you can't get recovery percent, but anyways, it's not that important. Um, what I mean to say is, like, the, the, the flat stats, like, attack 150 attack compared to compared to 20% attack um, once your monsters are at 6 stars it's going to be like really really big so it's it's a lot better to use um, percent base, based um, sets and it might be okay for you to completely like if you have a few 5 star runes that you either got from the shop or from farm, farming giants or, or golems I mean um, be better to use even a even a broken set, like meaning that you don't have a set bonus, rather than trying to use all the same sets and um, you know getting like a hundred and fifty attack when you can easily get that amount of attack if you have like just one good um, attack percent substat in one of your runes, you can like easily make up for it. So it's it's not that important to to get the set bonus if you're using the um, the flat sets later on in the game. So with that being said, um, it's if you're if you're strictly farming for runes, it's it, this is very very situational because there there are a lot of monsters that you can raise and it's a lot harder to farm these maps on extreme. I haven't even cleared all of them yet, and r let alone like you know actually try to farm them. But you know, I will be very very soon, and um, I would say it's okay. Like because the what I figured out was the the Golem Dungeon B4 and B5. There's like a really 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 big difficulty gap between B4 and B5. So worth it to use like if you have a, a diamond slot to farm your diamond slots from B4, and then maybe um, or like your square or triangle slots, you get get some from the other maps. Um, just just because of how much the difficulty gap is between B4 and B5, which is what I'm actually doing right now. I have heard that B5 you need and B6 you need to build like a nuke team, which I lack. I don't. I completely do not have a nuke team. Um, I'm like rocking double healers most of the time, so I, I it, I'm kind of like stuck on this. But um, I, I can clear it with the help of like a, a friend, but I'm not able to farm it consistently, um, which is why I'm planning to like you get some get some like square or triangle gems from from these maps and then for the diamond gems I'll get from the the, the golem dungeon um, another, another thing I wanted to point out just this is like this is probably not really noticeable but it might be somewhat a little bit important um, about it's about the selling price of gems um, gems get a higher sell price if they have more substats. So let me let me just find find two gems right here. All right. So 
these two are both triangle gems. Uh, they're, they're the same set, and they're both HP percent. This one, ha however, has attack and recovery substats, while this one has no substats. So if I was, a, if I was to sell this, I would get 2,400. Um, and if I was to sell this one, I would get 4,800. So you get a lot more... Um, you get a lot more money for selling gems that have substats. Um, that being said, the the gems that you get from Gollum usually have a lot more substats than the gems you get from from the levels. Because I think at most the when you're playing through the maps, um, the gems that you you get from from the normal levels they can only have like a maximum of two substats. Whereas if you farm in um, golems, I think the maximum is like four or something. So you're, you're definitely going to be able to, even the same grade, same set of gems, um, you're going to get a lot more for selling the ones with more substats, which means that the um, if, you're, if you're strictly farming for gems, it's better to farm in golems. But there's a lot of other benefits as well to farming the normal maps. There's like a lot more EXP bonuses. Um, you get to capture monsters, so if you want to like raise the skill of a certain monster, you get you can capture them there, them at the at the normal maps, um, and you know there's like I think that's basically it's basically the exp bonus, um, and so if you're like leveling monsters, you can just farm on the normal maps, um, but if you're strictly farming for gems, it's much better to farm at golems, um, unless you're not able to do so, like because because either you built your team a certain way, you're not able to clear a certain golem dungeon, um, you might be able to make up for it by using gems from the, the regular levels. And that's pretty much it. That's, that's, that's it for this video. It's a little bit longer, um, and I'll be continuing this guide, going in, uh, like more and more in-depth in, in each episode um, about certain aspects of the game. So hopefully you guys learned something, and hopefully this was helpful. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.